Good evening and welcome from the St. Leonard's Velodrome on this, the second last night of racing of the Channel 9 Winfield six-day bike race and, of course, the last hour of racing tonight. And what a last hour this should prove to be because at this present stage we have three teams with no laps down and they are Hans Cannell and Urs Freuler. No laps down, a total of 273 sprint points. In second placing on 253 sprint points, team number 11, Gary and Shane Sutton. Then we have Laurie Venn and Craig Price, who were fortunate enough to pick up a lap in the last series of sprints. They are also no laps down, 181 sprint points, followed by the team of Phil Sawyer and Terry Hammond. Team number four, one lap down, 208 sprint points. Paul Medhurst and uh, Murray Hall, team number eight, one lap down and 86 sprint points. They're the leading five teams. As you can see, three teams with no laps down and only sprint points separating them. So we're in for a tremendous night of action, the last hour, and we'll be back after this break, live from the St. Leonard's Velodrome. Take a tip from Wally and head to the Painter's Pod for some super outdoor paint specials. At all stores, Launceston, Devonport and Burnie. Walpham you along live class, $19.50. All purpose undercoat, $17.50. Julox weather shield gloss, $20.50. And $20.50 for high gloss. Don't compare prices, just go to the Painter's Pot first for their outdoor paint specials. The Painter's Pot, Launceston, Devonport and Burnie, opposite the post office. Resources, a major contributor to the Tasmanian economy, renewing Tasmania's forests. Well, welcome back to the live action here at the St. Leonard's Velodrome, and this is the Winfield Channel 9 six day bike race for 1983. Our commentators tonight, Ray James, and we welcome Harold Tiger Downing with us. Good to have you up with us, Tyke. Thanks very much indeed, Jim, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, in fact, the last hour's racing just before. Uh, we came on here is probably as exciting as I've seen at any six days race, especially when we saw uh, Hammond and Sawyer. And uh, I was just mentioning, you just about call them Batman and Robert uh, because uh, Sawyer seems to be controlling it, and Batman, uh, Terry Hammond goes with them. But have a look at them going now, Ray, the Sutton boys, the Packers. Well, Ray, do you, do you know the reason for this? Yes, they've got plenty of incentive, Shane Sutton and Gary Sutton. They've just been told by their sponsor, Century Motors, that if they can take a lap in this next series of five sprints, They've got $250, so there's a tremendous amount of incentive for them, and up, up they go, and that's Gary Sutton being led up by Phil Sawyer, and also Craig Price in third wheel, and they've opened up a break of about 50 metres over the other team, headed by Urs Fuller. And we are in a series of sprints, a series of five sprints, that's 30 laps, they've got two to go, and if they, mu they must take the lap in this 30 laps. And that's I can tell you this, that the Sutton brothers did not know that that $250 was coming up for them. That came out of the blue about four laps ago. They've got the bell this time round for the first of a series of five sprints, and the Sutton brothers aren't interested in the sprints. They're interested no. in $250 from Century Motors. That's right, Jim. Well, that works out about something like about uh, $8 a lap, and we see Terry Hammond and uh, he goes to pump it. Away goes Shane Sutton down the back straight. He's going to pull this one out as we see Venny go out after him and so too would be Urs Fraller. But Shane Sutton, we said, is not interested in the sprints. He's interested in the sprints because the field's going to expect him to ease up after he takes out a sprint. But he won't ease up because uh, he's too keen, this fellow. Although he has swung to the top of the track, Ray, and he's let these boys down underneath. But he's going to uh, sort the men from the boys. Certainly, but in this type of racing, this, this tempo racing of quick, uh, of, of constant pace, do you feel that they, they can do it on their own, Harold? No, I don't, Ray, because I think there's about four four teams out there. Earlier in the night, I thought the, side, the teams were sort of ganging up against Furler and Cannell because when Furler and Cannell took off, 
it was Sutton, the two Sutton boys who were the most aggressive took after and then Hammond, but now we've got two other contenders in the race and that's Venn and Price. Certainly. And uh, they're watching them like cat and mouse. There's no way Venn and Price with Laurie Venn's sprinting ability, they're going to let them get a lap. Well, there's Gary Sutton now going to the lead again. He's come high off the boards. He's gone out with about 10 or 15 minute break over Craig Price in second wheel. That's Terry Hammond now going into third place. He's followed in by Big Earth Troiler, who's just been put in there by Hans Cannell. And in fifth placing there looks to be Tony Perry. And the good thing about this, Ray, is of course all the teams are sponsored and it is good to see Century Motors who are sponsoring Team 11 put a little bit of money where their mouth is and up they go for $250 and it's good to see the boys chasing it. And I'll tell you what, they've opened up a break of 50 metres so they're, they're, uh, they're getting value for their money. That's a spoiler in second wheel sponsored by the Big M team and then we have Mark Osmond and uh, Mark Osmond here in fifth, uh, uh, Mark Osmond and Kerry Wood and there the, you can make it in Tasmania team. Two laps to go Harold. Yes, two laps to go on this sprint and these boys are now about 100 metres in front, 80 to 100 metres in front and Furl is being left to do all the work. Sutton out in front, he's after Century Motors, $250, there's no doubt about that. And here goes Sutton, showing in Gary Sutton, as they get the bell this time to go, one left to go, and there's still Cannell and Fool are out in front, we'll see Fool to throw Cannell in. Uh, Craig Price up around the outside now, Kerry Wood grabs the wall down the back straight, but they're in a long searching run for these leaders out the front, and I don't think they're going to pick them up. Certainly not, but there's, uh, they're also picking up a lot of sprint points now, the Sutton boys, there's well, three more. They only have to pick up another sprint point, uh, another sprint ray, and they could go to the top of the ladder, because Thriller and Cannell are being left to do all the work out the front. Kerry Wood and Mark Osmond picking them up, and uh, then we go back a little bit further to Tony Perry, the Bendigo rider, or Warnable rider. He's followed then by uh, that other team in the red is Wayne Hilden. And he's been riding a good race. Wayne Hilden, he's a former winner, Ray. Yes, a former win winner, but not hasn't probably got the, the pace this year as, as he had in the past. Ian Brown's looking a little pale, Ray. Well, the Sutton boys have certainly put a big space between them and the opposition. There you can see uh, Shane Sutton. I think, I think you can see $250 at the end of these sprints. Well, this is a magnificent ride, but once again, it's being left to Furla Canal. And I can't get over the improvement in uh, Craig Price over the years, Ray. As a matter of fact, I followed Ray right through his racing. and. Uh, if ever we've seen a rider improve as him, in fact, when he first started out, I remember the first year he rode about, the only time he knew where he was going was when he took castor oil or something, but have a look at Craig now, he, he's throwing them in, and he's one of the most experienced riders in the race. And Ray. to clear up a point, he did ride with Urs Foyler two seasons ago, and Kerry Wood rode with Hans Cannell. And really? the man we were trying to think of, this is Craig Price you're talking about, a yep. while back, Charlie Walsh Charlie was Walsh. the man when we claimed Craig Price as uh, the, the five of the six day days. Bike race. Well, anyway, let's see how the Sutton Look boys are going. There's two hundred and fifty dollars, well within their sights. Ian Certainly. Brown turned a There's Gary paint Sutton. of white. There's Gary. He's only about uh, sixty metres off the second last rider. If he picks up that second last rider, they've got two hundred and fifty dollars, and they also go to outright leadership in this Channel Nine Winfield Six Day Bike Race. Well, that's the big thing that matters, Ray. Is going to outright leadership and look at Shane Sutton go. As I said earlier, is that thing you can make a scarecrow out of him? By crikey, he's got courage, Ray. Look at him go down the back straight and listen to the crowd. Yes, the crowds absolutely bought these uh, fellas have bought the crowd at their feet as they go up. And there's the two hundred and fifty dollars from Century Motors, Ray. Yes. Ian Brown's gone to the bank. He's taken out a loan. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Well he's just disappeared, I think, hasn't he, Jim? <laughs> yes. Well, that's now it's now it's Paul Methurst now has sensed the breakaway. There's wonder if there's an incentive for him from the sponsors. They're the Forest Resources team. Paul Methurst and uh, and now he goes Urs. Ah. Here's a turn of pace. Ray Furl is not going to oh, let them. Oh uh, dear. Caught them licking. He's uh, opened up a gap of 30 metres when the rest of the field is 40 metres. He can uh, <laughs> lap this track in uh, 14 seconds, 14.1 consistently, but he certainly stirred them up now. Ray, look at the speed as he humps the back like a camel into the straight. Out after him at this stage, it looks like it's Murray Hall, is it? Well, he knows that the, uh, the Suttons must be pretty tired yes. after that lone chase. Well, the Suttons are tired, and now there's half a field covering, covering the main field, but there's three, three fields going to get out the front there. There's going to be Hans Cannell, Murray Hall and uh, Paul Medhurst. And here comes Batman, Phil Sawyer. Why Croak, we ought to call him Surgeon Sawyer. He's cutting a few of them up now, Ray. Look Boy, at him go. Gee, the pace is one, isn't it, Harold? Yes, Down the back. Look they at can't Hans Cannell. up for an hour. Hans Cannell, he's got Murray Hall in tow, followed in by Phil Sawyer, endeavouring to close the gap. And in fourth wheel, Kerry Wood. And the Sutton boys, Gary and Shane, are well backed, about 50 metres off the leaders. Yes, they're very, very tired. As a matter of fact, they remind me a bit of umpire Mick Devlin down the coast. Uh, Ray, they're flapping them around like old Muscovy ducks at present. Look at them. They're really tired, the, the Sutton boys. Yes. Oh, they're a long way behind. They're in danger of losing a lap here after they picked up their 250. The comment from Ian Brown a moment ago was, it might have cost me $250, but look at the bike race. He's live in the race up. <laughs> he certainly is. Well, let's run through the sponsors for the various... Oh, there's one lap to go on this sprint, and then we'll run through the sponsors of the various teams. And there's five teams with a break of about... 
50 to 60 metres, maybe even more now, over the other 14, which are headed by the, the Sutton boys. There's the bell. We find Murray Hall in, in tow, followed in by Terry Hammond. Then Mark Osmond, followed in by Urs Twiller, who's about to put in his partner, Hans Cannell, and Laurie Venn. Yes, is the bringing up the kid right there. Is bringing up the wheel in fifth position, but they're racing in single file. Ray, I've just about lost track of now who's in front, but well, here's, it's, uh, the, here's the leading Hall and Medhurst now in front with uh, Hutton and Hammond, uh, uh, rather Sawyer and Hammond, and then uh, I think it's Kerry Wood and Osborne, and then Furler and uh, Cannell are up amongst those. Then it's almost half a lap back to the uh, other team, and the two Ross Sutton Forster, boys are in there. Ross Forster and Shane Sutton, so they've lost contact with the main bunch. There they are, they're now on screen. That's Ross Forster and Shane Sutton, but they are some 70 to 80 metres off, this, off the leading bunch of riders. Well, Ray, this is war here at present, isn't it? Oh, my word, there's no doubt about that. It's totally disorganised, the bike race. And from a normal, neutral country like Switzerland, they've yes. declared war on the other nine. I would say there's no doubt in my mind now the Sutton boys are in trouble. They took that lap, but the $250 they've won from Century Motors is going to cost them dearly, Ray. I think so. Look at Frohler go now. Gee, he, this is the most... They can't sit on his wheel, Ray. This is the most sustained burst of speed we've seen from Urs for a long, long time. Hammond's going to win very quickly. Terry Hammond riding particularly well. Then follows uh, Murray Hall's just being put in by Paul Medhurst. In fourth wheel is, Murray, is uh, uh, Mark, Mark Osmond, Osmond riding particularly well. And then, as you say, Laurie Ben, fifth wheel. Yes, and then it's uh, a good half lap back to the others. And they're losing ground as we see Frohler and Cannell now out the front. Sitting on the wheel would be Terry Hammond. Then us back a little bit further to Paul Medhurst. Murray Hall there being thrown in would be Kerry Wood by Mark Osmond. Laurie Venn onto the tail of that field now. On the other side of the ground, we see uh, the Sutton boys having to do all the work because it's only the stragglers as we see Eric Bishop now being thrown in. But the Sutton boys swing to the top of the track and even on the top of the track we find that the others can't pick them up. So the Sutton boys... By crikey, they're in more trouble than a belly dancer with a hive. They are. After, look at them. after taking the lap and $250, yes. they've certainly lost ground, and they are very much in danger of losing of, of uh, losing their outright leadership. I don't and there goes Big Urs once again. Look at him go down the back straight. There's no doubt about it, Ray. They're in danger. Here comes Furler. He's opened up 15, 20 metres over the main field. Sawyer starting to look a little bit tired, and so do is Paul Medhurst. Then we go back to Mark Osmond. The little uh, dynamo, Craig Price, he starts to move up on the tail of that field, but now they're only 45 or 50 metres behind the uh, the middle markers, or, which include Shane Sutton, and uh, this is going to be the short lift, short, the shortest lived lead in a race for a long time, Ray. Well, there's your leader at the moment. That's Urs Spoiler on screen, followed in by Terry Hammond. Uh, he's been trailed by Murray Hall, followed in by Mark Osmond and, and uh, Laurie Venn, and here goes Hans Cannell now, and you'll see in just a moment the uh, other group of riders, the trailers, and they're being picked up. There you go. They've just gone past there now on the right-hand side of your screen. There they are. And so they've all lost a lap. And already, Ray, we've got another new leader. And listen to the crowd now. And that just shows the quality of what Furler and Cannell can do. When you work it out, Ray, Furler and Cannell, when you have the sprint times, they can consistently do a 200 metres in 12-1, uh, 12-2. Whereas the others is 12-7, 12-8. If they can put that together, which Cannell and Furler can, the others are in real trouble. They've certainly showed their quality in that series of sprints. Well, we've just seen five sprints. I'm not too sure whether we gave you the action in the five sprints, but there was plenty of action. We've seen a lap taken, a lap lost. We've seen the leadership change all in the last ten minutes. You're watching the action live from the St. Leonard's Velodrome in this, the Winfield Channel 9 six-day bike race for 1983. You've waited a long time for a beer like this. It's full-flavoured, it's clear and golden with a rich, creamy head. It's draft brewed to give you that great taste that could only be Bogues. New Bogues Light, low on alcohol, but that same great satisfying Bogues taste. Ah! New Bogues Light, a new beer from Bogues. This commercial is brought to you by the letter U. Hey, you, huh? What's a nice guy like you doing in a place like this? I'm here to spread the news about credit unions. Oh? Did you know they give you high interest rates on savings accounts and low interest rates on loans? Yeah, I've heard that. Did you know that everyone can join a credit union? Hey, I didn't know that. And the thing I like best about credit unions is they regard you as important. They really look after you. Well, see you later. Island State Credit Union. You is what we're all about. You own your vehicle, so you have the right to select where you'll have it repaired. Your selection should be made on quality, not price. That's why you're safe when you take your vehicle to a Panelmaster body repair shop. You get the highest standard of workmanship, a confident 12-month guarantee, a job that's done with your safety in mind, free pickup and delivery, and they have a courtesy car available. Take your car to the specialists. 
the Panelmaster Network. There's a repair shop near you. Look for the sign. Panelmaster. <laughs> Well, when I say welcome back to the action, I certainly mean the action here at the St. Leonard's Velodrome. Tiger, it's a long time since we've seen racing like this. While we're in the commercial break, the Suttons have gone again, and Crawler and Canella are trying desperately to bridge that gap. Jim, they can't keep this pace up for the next hour, and uh, look at them go down the back straight. They've been lapping consistently around the 14-second mark, 14, 14 and a half seconds, which is only about uh, one to one and a half seconds faster than the fastest, slower than the fastest lap. But it's the Suttons are the aggressors once again, and they're pretty sore over losing that last lap, but there's no way Frohler and Canella and the Hammonds and Sawyer teams are going to let them get away this time. Well, while the field are bunched up, let's take the opportunity to have a quick look at the scoreboard, and uh, we will see from that, without a shadow of doubt, that uh, Frula Canell, 278 points, no laps down, are in front. Only just from Sutton and Sutton, no laps down, 262. Ben Price still in there, in contention in third place. While there's a lull in proceedings and the boys are taking a breather, let's take you back and have a look at some of the highlights from earlier this evening. Riders coming around, one and a half laps to go, and this is the closing stages of the Century Motors Tempo Race, Ray James. Yes, and the leader is Phil Sawyer, but he's gathered in quickly, though, by uh, Urs Spoiler in second wheel. You can hear the bell sounding in the background. A most important victory will be for these teams to take out the 25 points att attached to the Century Motors Tempo Racing. It's Sawyer and, and uh, Spoiler. This will give the team of Spoiler and Canel the lead if they can take this out. Sawyer's battling hard on the inside. Uh, Spoiler's trying hard to go in, but Phil Sawyer's too strong, and Sawyer once again takes out the bonus points. Five cyclists left in this, the first heat of the Listen now, scratch race. As they come around next time, the cyclist last over the line will be out, so it will go on until one cyclist remains. Your commentator, Ray James. Five very good competitors in this one too. Jim, as Wayne Hilda takes up the running from underneath Hans Canell, then Terry Hammond, Laurie Venn, and Gary Sutton. Who's going to be eliminated here? I think it's Laurie Venn. I think you're right. Hildred, Canell, Venn. Terry Hammond this time has the last go at them. Now he goes fast from the rear. Look at him go. Right up on the outside, this gives Ben the sitting shot behind them too. Cannell might be in a little bit of trouble here. Ben's last of all into the straight. Hildred leads them up. There's a good shot, a head-on shot. No doubt about it that time. Laurie Venn that time. Here's the three. Cannell, Hildred, Hammond. Hildred might be in danger. They're riding very close. Hildred in the centre. Hammond down the outside. Underneath was Cannell, but this time Hildred in the centre. Team number 10. Cannell's underneath. He's got the advantage of about 10 or 15 metres. Hammond at the back. Now Cannell settles down to pedal hard, looks over his shoulder, sees Hammond right at the shoulder. Cannell and Hammond, here's a great, uh, a great spectacle. Hammond on the outside, Cannell on the inside. Who's going home the stronger? Oh, Cannell. I think Cannell on the inside just threw at the wire. Cannell by a whisker. Cyclists rolling around in this, the second heat of the Miss Nard scratch race. Four cyclists remaining. Uh, there's Fruller just eliminated. Craig Price leading them up at this stage. The commentator, Ray James. That's Craig Price. Brian Tilly in the very mauve colour, as you can see. He's in second wheel, followed then by Murray Hall. And bringing up the rear is Kerry Wood. Price riding from the front tonight. Possibly would be the better sprinter, too, of the remaining three cyclists. He's up off the saddle, Craig Price. Price, Tilly, Hall and Wood. Brian Tilly is eliminated. He's in the mauve colours. Murray Hall leads them from Craig Price, second wheel, Kerry Wood, third. He's up off the saddle. Here come the challenges now from Price and Wood. Wood looks a bit shaky. He goes underneath. Price cut, cut the opening there. Very well done. And Kerry Wood is out on form so far. Craig Price would be the better sprinter. We'll soon know. We'll soon know. They've gone very early. There's the bell sounding in the background. This is to Price's advantage. Hall may have gone too soon. He may have mistimed the lap. He certainly did. I think he's mistaken the laps. He has done so. Now he's gone to the going to the rear. But uh, Craig Price has gone uh, gone too early. Yes, I think Murray Hall mistook the laps, and this has given Craig Price easy victory in heat two of the missing out, and he'll now go on to meet Hans Cannell. Bell sounding in the background. Cannell from the front. Price. He's high on the boards. When will he make his move? Cannell was watching over his left shoulder. There goes Price. Underneath he goes. He's got a break to about three or four lengths inside the last 100 metres. Price and Cannell. Price is riding strongly. This is going to take a big effort from Cannell. Craig just in front and holding on. Oh, a pop in the wind. Well ridden. Price first. Cannell second. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
And we bring you back to the action live here at the St. Leonard's Velodrome and uh, cyclists rolling around. A little bit of action. They go into another series of sprints at 10.30, I think, the next series are, right? And we may even have a surprise for our viewers, too, in that series of sprints. Well, we'll wait and see what happens in the 10.30 series. And at this stage, there goes Hans Canal. Just well, broken out of the pack as we speak. Well, well these fellas haven't let up uh, ever since uh, we've been on the highlights there. These guys have been going all the time. They've opened up about three half laps in the fields to team together. But here comes Canell throwing in Urs Frule and wouldn't be a bit surprised to see these guys take a lap because Frule has fared it. Oh, look at him. Go. I saw anybody put the nose on the front, like, front wheel like that way was Pato. Have a That's look at right. him go down the back straight. He's opened up half, half a lap in one lap. They have. And I think they're in danger of... Oh, uh, the other sides are in, in danger of losing a, uh, losing contact here. Because well, Urs is out after them. He's fair dinkum this time, isn't he? And there you've got the big long shot of the track. And you can see the man absolutely in Tiger's terms putting power to the pedal as he oh, opens the shoulders. Just about call him the bullet. Was <laughs> the bullet canal. The bullet fruler, rather. And uh, cannonball canal. Well, he's ripped his arms out. Yes. Really changed. If they pick a lap up here, but the others have sensed danger now, and they're certainly applying pressure, but there's no, they're so totally disorganised. Yes, right. three nights ago, I said at the time they could take a lap, win, and how they wanted. I'll stick with that statement at this particular moment. They're certainly giving a fine illustration of it now. Well, the Here's hands. They're a half a lap behind. Well, there's a half a lap difference, we'll put it that way. In fact, Ray, it's even more than that. They've picked up probably 20 metres in that rap, uh, lap because the main bunch is completely organised. We see now Shane Sutton come in... He's followed around then by Robin Hammond. Then it's back to Laurie Venn. Up on the outside of him in the all-black uh, moving there would be Murray Hall. Then we go back to Mark Osmond. But look at Urs Fruhler. Urs Fruhler putting power to pedals. He's pushing and pulling down. They go down the back straight now. And into the straight, it's uh, Craig Price. He's opened up about three or four lengths, and they are disorganised. They right? are. The, the main bunch of riders completely disorganised. Here they come up. Here's Urs again. Oh, yes, they picked up at least 30 metres on that, uh, on that particular lap. My word, he's a powerful rider, the Sirs Fool. I said earlier in the Christmas series, I don't think he could, could sustain his pace, but boy, have a look at him go. He's nearly ripped uh, Cannell's arm out of the sockets as he throws him in. There's no uh, timidness about that. And the fact is, they're doing this on their own, too. They've got That's no right. help at all. It's a lone ride. They're only 50 metres behind the main bunch, and away goes Shane Sutton. He opens up two or three lengths over Paul Medhurst. They're followed on the outside. Well, I think that's Mark Osmond back a little bit further to uh, Terry Schindler. He's the Bendigo rider. Ross Forster's there also. And uh, Batman in uh, Phil Sawyer. Then there's a gap back to Laurie Venn. Oof. The, uh, looks like on the tail of the field there could be uh, Brian Tilly, the South Australian. And they're in trouble in the back straight as away goes Canelo again. The cannonball kid out after the field. <laughs> 40 metres down, right? Yes, they'll pick them up this lap, I feel sure. Here he comes up the straight. Now there's the main bunch of riders and there's hers. And you'll listen to the crowd erupt here because he's such a very, very popular oh. rider. Down the back straight he goes. He's got the others in sight now. He's going high on the track. There's the first of them. That's Lenny Hammond. He's completely demoralised the main field as he goes up and now takes the lap. And now we've got the leaders once again. In fact, Urs Fuller, I think they've gone a lap, uh, two laps up, is it, Ray? One lap. They're one, one lap, lap on the of course, field. Uh, the Tuttons took a lap earlier, yes. Well, let's run through our list of sponsors after that uh, tremendous ride by Fuller and Cannell. The Ian McGeo and Tony Perry team, sponsored by City Twin Cinemas. The Darrell Benson from Western Australia, team number two, that is, and Wayne Nichols, who have withdrawn from the event. They're the Launceston Federal Casino. Team number three, the leaders, outright leaders in our Channel 9, and here he goes again. And just to prove the point, look at Urs Fuller. Oh. Catch Powers. me if you can. Is he a powerhouse? Catch me if you can, that's right. And he's certainly got the field struggling as uh, the team of Tilly and Hammond lost the lap. Uh, they've lost two laps in uh, the last half an hour since the 10 o'clock sprints began. Well, I think so. The team that's in trouble is Bishop and Perry. Well, they're the big M team, Urs, Fuller and Hans Canel. I think they've seen a few of their commercials. They've got the inspiration. <laughs> Phil Sawyer and Terry Hammond, sponsored by Taz Breweries. And uh, thank you from the phone call from the boys from Taz Brewery. Ray, a few comments by Ray about Taz Breweries last night and appreciated by the chaps down there. And uh, nice to hear from them today. So did Phil Sawyer and Terry Hammond sampling the products well good on them as you, as you said uh, you wouldn't get two better chaps to look after a product as we said team number five kerry wood and mark osmond the all tasmanian team and sponsored no doubt by the you can make it in tasmania campaign eric Bishop you've made it Tass uh, harold in tassie haven't you yes there's been a lot of tasmanians make it uh, uh ray the same as we have all achieved something in tasmania there's no better place in this world to achieve it ray we'll come back in a moment and check out some of the others right now ray let's take a commercial break and come back with all the action here at the st leonard's velodrome now, 
Now the 20 best songs of Glenn Campbell's distinguished career are yours in a superb new album. Galveston, oh Galveston, Glenn Campbell's greatest hits. Where's the playground, Susie? Here's to all everybody played the born of archery tree like a rhinestone cowboy on tree boy. This is an outstanding collection from a uniquely talented performer. Glenn Campbell's greatest hits. Out now on Capitol Records and Tapes. You've waited a long time for a beer like this. It's full-flavoured, it's clear and golden with a rich, creamy head. It's draft brewed to give you that great taste that could only be Bogues. New Bogues Light, low on alcohol, but that same great satisfying Bogues taste. Ah! New Bogues Light, a new beer from Bogues. The Sheffield Shield, hard, tough, competitive cricket. Player against player, state fighting state. The Sheffield Shield, cricket's civil war. See it this weekend. Live at the St. Leonard's Velodrome, the Winfield Channel Line six-day bike race for 1983. While the commercial break was on, the break was on from the Suttons. They're half a lap up at this stage, but before we get into depth on that particular thing, let's have a quick look at the scoreboard before it changes again. There you see it, Truly Canell, no laps down, 278 points. Sutton and Sutton now one lap down on 262 points, and Ben Price also one lap down on 182 sprint points. So to get back on equal footing, the Suttons must get this lap. They've got half a lap at the moment. They'll go into a series of sprints at 10.30. Tiger, can they keep going with this one? No, I don't think they can keep going, and it's no doubt because in the front we've got Urs, Ruler and Cannell, and then we've got the Osmond boys, and they're just holding them for about the last seven or eight laps. They've been holding them at half a lap. No doubt tiring the Sutton boys because Shane Sutton and Gary Sutton are starting to look as though they're feeling the pinch a bit and we've got Froehler controlling the main bunch. I don't think they can uh, do it, but I'd like to see them pick up the lap, Ray. Oh, my word. No, I think they've got every chance of doing it, Harold and myself. Team number seven, the team of Laurie Venn and Craig Price. Laurie Venn from Victoria, Craig Price from Tasmania. They're sponsored by the Island State Credit Union team. Paul Midhurst and Murray Hall, Forest Resources. Len Hammond and Brian Tilly from South Australia. They're the sleep maker combination. And they can use that tonight when this session's over, I, I would think, Ray. I would think so. Wayne Hildred and Ross Forster. They're from the Painter's Pot. The big sign out here on the velodrome track. Gary Sutton and Shane Sutton, of course, Century Motors, and Greg Wybrow and Terry Schindler from Victoria. They're the panel master team, but the Sutton boys are gradually decreasing that gap, uh, Harold, and I think they'll pick up this lap. Yes, Ray, I'm going to have to eat my words. I think they're only 60 or 70 metres off the main field, and we see uh, Cannell and uh, Fruller in the main field having a go, and Laurie Venn now swings to the top of the track as we see Medhurst go underneath. Then we go back a little further to Phil Sawyer, followed by Greg Wybrow. They're followed by Brian Tilly, and the Sutton boys going up They've about got to em. join them. They've picked them up and uh, we're talking about who they were sponsored. I thought, well, maybe Taz Brewery's had sponsored Shane Sutton because they call him <laughs> the unquenchable Ray. But uh, they've got the feel. But look what's happened, and Ray. Bang, Bang, yeah, away that. goes Fruller. Isn't this what all six-day racing is about, though? As soon as one takes racing. a lap, then we'll test them out. And another favour team tests the other riders out. But Fruller, he's gone high on the track here this time. Now away goes Terry Hammond. And he's one rider with Phil Sawyer that can certainly spread eagle this field. Especially that. if the product from their sponsor came through, Ray. <laughs> By crikey, that thrill is fast, Ray. Uh, I was talking to Danny Clark last year, told me how fast he is. Do you know that when he's in Europe, Danny Clark was telling me about it, he, he can jump out of bed of a night, he can put the light out, off, and he's back in bed before it's dark. That's <laughs> how quick he is. Like, that's fair dinkum, this fellow <laughs> thriller. So, and we saw a bit of it tonight. <laughs> Your reputation is spreading far and wide once again, Harold. <laughs> well, uh, he is pretty fast as we see the boys swing down the back straight, but here's a breakaway. It's Batman and Robin away this time. <laughs> Sawyer and Hammond. Sawyer gets to the front. He's about to throw the uh, Phil, uh, rather Hammond. He throws Sawyer in the main field, being carted along this time by Brian Tilly. In fact, that's Len Hammond, Craig Price there, followed on the inside by uh, Kerry Wood. Here's Cannell having a crack at him. Gary Sutton picks up his wheel, then it's back a little, a little bit further. High up on the track is Terry Schindler. He swings down. Ross Forster picks up his wheel. Kerry uh, Wood drops back through the field. Paul Medhurst is there, but these boys out in front us now are uh, Phil Sawyer. Well, Phil Sawyer is doing it well, Ray. He's nearly half a lap up. And they could do with this lap, Harold, because they are two laps behind the leader. So a lap here to Phil Sawyer and Terry Hammond, the Tasmanian Brewery-sponsored team. It'll be very, very valuable to them. 
There they go, Phil Sawyer, just about to, about to put in Terry Hammond. You know, it just reminds me now of the Taz Brewery's team. He's built like a little stubby, Terry oh, Hammond. Oh, Terry, yeah, he's built like a little stubby. Oh, like, dear. Like, is that man, they have trouble drinking him though, right? <laughs> Stan Highland down there might take offence to that one, I think, right? <laughs> no, they're certainly putting their heart and soul into it tonight, and uh, no doubt they're out there into uh, all these drinks that's going to give them oxygen. And this fellow can stay all night. He's got more staying power than Hat McGandy because he's won two Sun Tours race. That's correct. In fact, he's the Sun Tour title holder. He won it in 1982. There Have a look at him go. Throws in the surgeon, Phil Sawyer, yep. cutting him up tonight as he swings into the bottom bend. Have a look at him down the bottom now. We've got uh, the Sutton boys in front of the main field. Gary Sutton being thrown in there by Shane Sutton. Craig Price sitting pat. He's riding well. The big fellow is... Uh, his hands can then it's back a little bit further to Terry Schindler. He's there, followed by Kerry Wood. Up on the outside would be Paul Medhurst. Bringing up there in the lighter blue was uh, uh, Tony Perry in the all-white. Throwing his mate in there on the tail would be Eric Bishop. And trailing once again would be uh, these boys not going too good. Len Hammond and Brian Tilly have lost another lap, and they're now 14 down, I think, Ray. A little bit disappointing, too, because they're riders of top-class calibre, but again showing the strength and uh, and stamina that's required to contest a six-day bike race well at least ray they've got a lot of experience because they've ridden a lot of rides around here they've, i think this is brian till he's fifth six yeah and it covers about two thousand laps every six right so he'd, yeah. know, he'd know every board on the track yeah he knows the way here they go. It, doesn't he? he doesn't need any compass to know which way he's coming or going well here's terry hammond he's putting everything he can into this he's still about a half a lap behind he hasn't got much support he's just about to go up go fast brian tilly there's Brian Tilly, you can see him in your screen there now. Terry Hammond going up on the outside. He's been joined there by Wayne Hildred. Just goes on the inside of... Oh, that's not Wayne, that's his partner, Phil Sawyer. Crazy horse. Now, uh, Craig Price has had a bit of a crack out in front, but nobody too keen to go on, go on with him. And I think Phil Sawyer and Terry Hammond, they've nicknamed them up here, Batman and Robin. Another two that's going to pick them up this time, Jim, as they come up and uh, they're still thrills. Uh, Cannell and Furl are up. Uh, what are they, 278 print, print points? They're not far up because it's only 16 points, isn't it? That's right. right. And there's Sutton, Sutton, uh, 262, no laps down. The two teams that are battling it out. Benton Price, one lap down. They're going to have to do something. They're on 182 sprint points, not enough points. They've got to take that lap. And incidentally, talking about sponsors, Ray, as we were a moment ago, team number seven sponsored by the Island State Credit Union. And uh, my gosh, they've done it in style. They've got the little Volkswagen. And there, for anyone that's been to the movies, is E.T. sporting the Island State <laughs> Credit Union. <laughs> oh, cheering for Team 7. The sponsorship and the colour uh, the color around this ground uh, is unbelievable, Ray. Like it, I know you can pick it up on uh, on the television, but at home, uh, you can't pick it up at like it's here. That's right. It's absolutely you, magnificent. You, you miss the atmosphere, don't you? Yes. It's the same as a Burnie Carnival, or a Trobe Carnival, or a Devonport Carnival. You must be there to, just to be part, uh, to, to feel that atmosphere. Can I, uh, oh, there's trouble, Ray. There's a, a rider fell up on the top end. I think it might uh, yeah, it's Greg been Wybrow, Greg is it? Wybrow, yes. That no, was a bad fall. My word, uh, Frel and Lily went over the top. No, it's, it's Terry Schinter. Terry Schindler, is it? Oh, he's in trouble, Ray, too. And uh, that's the first time uh, that we've seen a fall, I think, for the whole week. Is it, Ray? Uh, there has been a, a couple of minor ones, but nowhere near as severe as that one. And well, he was, unfortunately, he was riding towards the rear of the field, too. Yes, and uh, he was right at the top of the track, and he slid right down by Crikey. Uh, he's going to take a few tweezers in his backside over the next few weekends, I reckon, because there'll be some splinters there, Ray. That's Greg Wybrow and Terry Schitter of the team of Panel Masters, so it's very, very bad luck. They're the ones that break collarbones, Tiger, the yes. ones that drop and slide down. They're the ones that really cause a lot of pain, and oh, any well, of them cause pain, but it's, it's they're the nasty Terry one. Schitter, I'm certain it yes, is. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's most unfortunate for Terry because uh, although they're not right up there amongst them, they've certainly been good competitors. Got to move on here out of the uh, main field as we see Eric Bishop and Tony Perry go out after trying to pick up a few laps and Tony Perry's yes. been riding extremely well, Ray. There's Greg Wybrow there just in case his family may be viewing. Ver Greg Wybrow is certainly on the track. The uh, partner, his partner of the panel master team, uh, Terry Schindler, was the one that fell and he's being attended to up there now was Terry Schindler that uh, fell on the top end. Here comes the move as we see Murray Hall go out. He's about to throw Paul Medhurst in now. Laurie Venn grabs Craig Price, slims him into action as they go down the back straight. Mark Osmond picks up his will then. It's back a bit further to Tony Perry, 30, 40 metres back to Terry Hammond being thrown in there by Phil Sawyer and Ersfrul and Hans Cannell having a bit of a spell, Ray. And I think that, uh, just to uh, clear up a point, that Phil Sawyer and Terry Hammond have just taken that lap. They have now. indeed, and yes. to throw the thing into total confusion, Ray, we've got a fallen rider on the top corner. We've got into a series of sprints coming up with one to go and Ian Brown has put up another two hundred and fifty dollars if team eleven can take another lap in You're this joking, next 30 Jim. laps. I'm the not man, joking. The man is mad. 
<laughs> Another two hundred nicely. That's five hundred dollars in half an hour. That's That'll right. make them work. $250. If Team 11 can pick up another lap in the next 30 laps from their sponsor, Century Motors. Right, we're into this series of five sprints, and here's the uh, six laps to go coming up, and this is Laurie Venn leading him out here, Harold. Laurie Venn from Paul Methurst, then Kerry Wood, followed by Tony Perry, and uh, Greg Wybrow is there. Uh, he's number 12, and Terry Schindler is still on that track. Laurie Venn not too keen to go on with it. Ray swings up the top of the track and allows Paul Midhurst to move through underneath. But here comes Mark Osborne around the outside. In front it could be Paul Murray Hall and uh, Paul Midhurst. It's Paul Midhurst, Murray uh, Hall. Then it's back to Mark Osborne. Then uh, the apricot kid from the Golden Valley, Laurie Venn. And uh, that other rider there is Tony Perry who goes up to join them. But I think he's on his feet, Ray. No, he's being carried out. He's being carried uh, through here. Oh, dear. Yes, he's being carried. There he is there. The cabin. He's been just being put into his shed. Well, he's been hurt badly because he didn't move when he hit the track, and uh, uh, he's a Bendigo cyclist. He finished yes. second in the Warnable, uh, Melbourne Warnable bike race last year, Ray, or in 1981. And rode well at the Coastal Carnival, Harold. Yes, he rode extremely well. He finished second in one of the wheel races and won a couple of the minor handicaps. Well, let's get back to the action here because these five teams you see on your screen at the moment, namely Craig Price, Paul Medhurst, Paul Medhurst, Ross Forster, Tony Perry and Greg Wybrow, they've got a half a lap over the main bunch and they could pick up a lap. Now it's not so bad, not so the important part is that Ben and Price are in this in this breakaway group. That's Kerry Wood, I think they're two, Ray. Kerry Wood. Mark Osman, yes. Mark Osman. Four riders out at this stage. Um, and that of course is making life very difficult for the Suttons because with the $250 hang there, they're tucked in behind Frawler and Cannell and uh, really can't go anywhere. It must be very frustrating. I think Ian is very safe with his 250 this time. I think so. I think so. Well, in fact, we look at the last 30 laps, Ray, and we had two laps taken. We had a lap taken in the last 10 laps, so uh, uh, Ian's got a bit of a smile on his face, so uh, maybe he's feeling a bit better as we see the big fellow now, Furler, move around the outside. Down underneath is Brian Tilly, Lenny Hammonds there also. Shane Sutton, no, that isn't Shane Sutton. Is that Ray moving up into third wheel? Yes, it's it is. Fact, I is. think it is. Shane Sutton, uh, he's followed around then by the rider in the red there, which is uh, Ross Forster. And on the tail of the field would be uh, Phil Sawyer, but the boys have got the bell lap, Ray, as they come up. Yes, and this, and this is the is leading the, bunch, Harold. Oh, this is the leading this bunch the leading coming bunch, in the yes. now, and it looks like Paul Medhurst going to take out the sprint, but they're not really racing for the sprints now. They're more intent on getting the lap, Ray. That's correct, to, uh, and I think they could succeed too. So it's Craig Price down the back straight. You can see he's being tailed by Paul Medhurst, then Kerry Wood, and uh, just Tony Perry. They're just putting in Eric Bishop. Well, Tony Perry and Eric Bishop are uh, well the down in the in the race. In fact, they're down. Uh, how many laps has Tony uh, Perry left? But they're ten laps 10, down, 10 are laps they, Ray? Down, yes. Number one, ten laps down. But that team has had a lot of interruptions. It's Eric Bishop yes. and Tony Perry now. It formerly was Ian McGeog with Tony Perry, but Ian has withdrawn from the race. And that's the City Twin Cinema team. But I think they'll pick up the lap now, and they've ridden well. That's Three laps to go, Ray, for this uh, leading bunch. And my word, uh, Murray Hall's now putting the power to the pedals. Aren't Mark they Osborne. working well, Tiger? Yes, Mark Osborne and Kerry would have been a very consistent side. They've been uh, sticking with the best of them. They haven't been aggressive, but there's no matter what move goes on. He's a good rider, Mark Osborne, Ray. Well, former Australian inspectman. Yes, he's right at Burnie at the Burnie Carnival on New Year's Day for a sprinter was as good as we can see from any Tasmanian for a long time. And they picked the lap up, Ray. They just go to join them. And he added depth to the back markers. Most certainly, yep. OK, so they're coming up with two sprints to go, uh, two laps to go for this particular sprint. And Who'll the main next? group has regrouped. And uh, there's a lap there for four teams. Paul Medhurst, Eric Bishop, Kerry Wood, and the team of Ben and Price. They go back to uh, no laps down again, Ben and Price, Ray. So there's three teams in it once three again. Three teams in it once again. Who'll go next? And that money of $250 still hanging for Team 11, right? It's only a matter of time. There's the bell sounding for this particular sprint. And it's Terry Hammond leading the main bunch out from Ross Forster. There's big hands, Hans Cannell. He's forced wide, but he's got to the lead. I think he'll go all on his own too, this particular lap. There's no immediate challenge, although it's Phil Sawyer in second wheel. Followed then by Ross Forster. Cannell in front, though, he's going to pick up these three sprint points. Sawyer's coming up on the outside. Will he make it? No. Cannell first, Sawyer second, and Wayne Hildred third, and in fourth wheel was Murray Hall. Yes, Murray Hall now picks up in a fourth wheel, and the Sutton's still in the middle of the field. Mark Osmond picks up that there, followed by Laurie Venn. Then we go back and further to uh, Tony Perry, and on the tail of the field is Lenny Hammond uh, being thrown in there, Brian Tilly. But let's pick them up out the front once again, and as Ross Forster and Wayne Hildred team goes to the front, Earl Furler. That's moves the Painters into the second team. wheel. The Painters Pot team moves up there. Then it's back a little further to Murray Hall, about three lengths further back. We see this rider being thrown in as Terry Hammond up on the outside of him as Shane Sutton down underneath now Mark Osborne making the move. 
and Craig Price. They ease up as they come up to get three to go on this sprint race, and we're going to see somebody explode out of the pack in a few minutes because it's the first time in this hour's uh, session it's been a little bit quiet for the last three or four laps. Well, there's the incentive for the uh, for that team of Century Motors out there. That's uh, the Sutton boys, but they're not making all that much of a determined effort. I think oh, they're saving themselves. Right. Oh, they must be. Yes, very tight. They would be tight. I well, think they'll probably uh, forfeit the $250 this time, right? Well, here's Craig Price leading the main bunch of riders, headed by Eric Bishop, who's just about to put in his teammate in Tony Perry. That's the City Twin Cinemas team, followed then by Paul Medhurst and Ro Murray Hall from Forest Resources. The Sleepmaker team of Lenny Hammond and Brian Tilly is also up there. And then we've got the Panel Master team of Greg Wybrow, who's in and out with one of the other teams, as his other teammate Terry Schindler was involved in that very nasty ball. We haven't had a reply from Terry Schindler. I think they came up that, uh, what was that, two laps to go. Coming up to get the bell this time, Tony Perry out in front of Paul Medhurst, then it's back to the big fellow Hans Cannell. He's followed by Mark Osborne. Hasn't left that wheel for much. In the all blue would be Gary Sutton as they'll come up this time and they'll get the bell. And out in front, Tony Perry leads the way. We're going to see a good sprint here. Murray Hall in the second wheel. Moving up on the outside, him would be Hans Cannell. He throws the bullet in Urs Fuller around the outside. And they go down the back straight and bang! Away goes the big fellow Fuller around the outside. Perry trying to hold Fuller at bay. He's got him popped on the shoulder, but Fuller's too good. They go to the line, it's close. Who's won it? I know who's won it. I'm not silly, Ray. It's only the way they've cut me hair, I think. As uh, he goes to the front, Fuller takes out another one. I don't know what they'd say to you if you did a lorry then. No, oh, the replay there. just has a bit of a look around. Run it, run it with plenty in hand, as they say in racing terminology. They've got five more laps to go for this next next sprint as the main bunch of riders have regrouped. And normally out there in front, we've got Shane Sutton. Sutton and the oh. team of Gary Sutton, the Century Motors team, followed then by the big M team of Urs Fuller and Hans Cannell. In third wheel, Terry Hammond and Phil Sawyer. Tasmanian breweries. Poor old Greg Wybrow, they ought to call him Arch, I reckon, Ray. He needs a bit of support out there. He's riding <laughs> on his own. He, he's in real trouble, isn't he? He's, uh, what, I just can't pick up who they're throwing him in with, Ray. No, I, can't, I don't think they've made any announcement, really. No. Uh, uh, I think I reckon it could well be the team number one, uh, Tony Perry and, yes, and, and well, Eric Bishop, because they're about on the same path. Yeah, and they seem to be sticking together a bit. Yes, so I think that's who it is. He's going to be a tired boy tonight if he has to ride too far on his own. We have a camera situated up very close to where uh, Terry Schindler fell. He's in the uh, dressing room there now. He's being attended to by a doctor, I believe, and also St John's Ambulance. And now's a good time to mention the St John Ambulance people, right? They come out here, they're out here every night. Um, they're available whenever there's a fall, which fortunately has been very frequent. But uh, by gosh, they're a great, a great organisation. Wherever you go, wherever you go. Yeah, and they certainly do the right thing at the six-day bike race. I class them in the same category as the Salvation Army. Most certainly, Ray. I'd venture to say sport wouldn't be what it is anywhere in Australia, probably throughout the world today, without our St John's Ambulance. There's well, the shot of the crowd, I was just going to say. No, that was, the, that was the shot Into from Terry Schindler's... Yes. Uh, oh, was it? Sorry, yes, it was yes. a crowd shot. It must well, either, could either be his wife or girlfriend. I mean, she was showing some concern, too. I can imagine she would. One lap to go on this sprint. This is the last sprint lap. Let's see who's taking over. It's Paul Methurst. He's been joined on the outside, though, by Shane Sutton. In goes Ross Forster. Around the outside comes the uh, little stubby himself in Terry Hammond. Methurst still in front. Methurst in front holding on. Yes, Paul Methurst from Gary Sutton, Terry Hammond and Ross Forster. I don't know whether you noticed that, Ray, but there was a little bit of indecision between the two Sutton boys. When Shane Sutton just threw Gary in, they missed hands. Yes. Uh, if had been on the bank, that's how a lot of falls happen. And, uh, of course, this is just concentration, isn't it? When the field eases up, it's very easy to become a little complacent, Jim. Well, Ian Brown's got a smile from ear to ear, Ray. I wonder why. <laughs> He's kept his $250. He's such a mug punter, he probably thinks he's on double or nothing and got it all back. That's all right. You've got to go down tomorrow and look at him eyeball to eyeball because there's still tomorrow night left then. We'll be back with more of the action live at the St. Leonard's Velodrome. And this is the Winfield Channel 9 six-day bike race right after this break. I'd really like to know what his name is. I'd really like to show a good time. I'd really like to say hello I wonder if she'd like to go to a party with me Let's get together, you and me I got the feeling we could be So happy feeling that kind of feeling That big and mm -hmm feeling 
Take a tip from Wally and head to the Painter's Pod for some super outdoor paint specials. At all stores, Launceston, Devonport and Burnie. Welcome you along life class, $19.50. All purpose undercoat, $17.50. Julox Weather Shield Gloss, $20.50. And $20.50 for high gloss. Don't compare prices, just go to the Painter's Pot first for their outdoor paint specials. The Painter's Pot, Launceston, Devonport and Burnie, opposite the post office. Forest Resources, developing and marketing a natural resource, Tasmania's forests. Tasmania's abundant forest areas provide a wide range of benefits. They are a totally renewable source. Forest Resources regenerates after logging with major reforestation programs. They employ Tasmanians and generate revenue for Tasmania. It's the Devonport Cup three-day carnival with total stakes in excess of $45,000. First day, Saturday the 8th of January is the Members Ansett Holiday Stakes Meeting plus on-course TV, bookmakers and TAB. Entertainment for all at the Devonport Cup Carnival, Sprayton Park. Well, welcome back to the action of the St. Leonard's Velodrome and gosh, what a night of racing it's been. Tiger, I know that you've been watching uh, this during the week, but before we go to that, um, that four looks to have been rather bad. The St. John Ambulance boys have raced over, they've got the stretcher, and I would suggest that they're going to take him to hospital. Yes, well, uh, just having a look at there on the monitor, it doesn't look too good, Jim. He's, Fortunately, uh, he's conscious. He's conscious, but uh, I would say that, he, as you mentioned, it's a real collarbone breaker, that uh, a fall such as that when they go plop straight down and... Uh, most fellows down there are very concerned for him and I certainly hope that he's able to take his place back in the field tomorrow night because it would be a tragedy to see a rider taken out and uh, he's been riding very well, Terry. All right, well, it's, as you say, I hope that everything works out very, very well for him and that it's not a particularly serious one. We have another series of sprints coming up, but Harold, speaking of Terry Schindler and, the success he, and his success at the Coastal Carnivals, what a big day of sport there is along the coast tomorrow up there. The Sheffield Shield Cricket, uh, the opening of the Devonport Cup Carnival at uh, Sprayton. We've also got the combined Greyhound Racing Meeting and the Trotting Meeting at Devonport tomorrow night. And, and of course day, the Alveston Carnival. Well, the Alveston Carnival's on down there tomorrow and that's a magnificent spectacle for uh, runners, uh, lovers of uh, athletics because it's a uh, pro amateur yes. event. Uh, it's about five or $6,000 going off in professional events and I would venture to say that probably the Alveston Carnival and uh, is probably the best running carnival, straight out running carnival that's conducted in Tasmania and I certainly wish Greg Woodhouse and uh, his committee down there the best of luck tomorrow and uh, all they want to make it a great day and a spectacle is the fine weather, right? They cater also for a wide range of, uh, of events, don't they? They have the footballers gift and they have oh, the, right. the uh, 800 metres, the 1600 metres right. and of course the amateur athletes are able to compete on a handicap basis which is something unusual. Oh it is and we've got uh, two of the state's top women uh, handicappers there in uh, uh, Jalinda Simpson and uh, Sally, Oakley. Sally Oakley and uh, Ray, well, you know as much about those, and they're a treat to watch these uh, oh, girls. Well, Sally Oakley, I thought, was most unlucky not to make Australia's Commonwealth Games most team certainly. at Brisbane. And, of course, Jalinda Simpson, in her age group, is one of Australia's, not just Tasmania's, but Australia's best sprinters. And I watched her come up through the Reese High School for you know, a number of years in all her age groups, and she's been a dominant sprinter, and a lovely little girl too, but uh, she's got a tremendous amount of ability. Ray, uh, I think Greg Ritchie's running at Alveston tomorrow, that magnificent oh. miler who ran 3.55 at Burnie last week, and he's out to win the big Brambles mile at Alveston tomorrow. That's a thousand. Well, he's been one of the most impressive runners in distance events, or in fact from 400 metres right through, Harold, that we've seen at a, at a coastal yeah. carnival for years. Yeah, he's a magnificent uh, runner, and uh, we're going to see them all in action on the coast tomorrow. Well, there's the bell sounding for this particular series of sprinting. And Lenny Hammond having trouble with his bike. He's just getting uh, looked after with a handler. Phil Sawyer and out with, I'm not too sure who, but uh, that's the way it happens. All of a sudden, a tyre, a, a puncture, and they're fixed that quickly. They're back in business now, Ray. Right? Hans Cannell takes out that one. Six to go next time around. And the second sprint coming up in a series of five. Here we go down. And you wouldn't believe it. Brownie has gone back out to give that $250 away again. Oh, you're joking, oh, Jim. I'm not. The course commentator has just announced the $250 is still there from Century Motors if Team 11 can take a lap in the next 29 laps. Well, it certainly raised them up, and I'd say that the racing tonight, Jim, has probably been as good as that I have seen in any night at six days racing. You don't think the money's got anything to do with it, Tiger? I'll say it has. The money's got... The, <laughs> they've got dollars in their eyes, these bikies, and, uh, of course, they tr work pretty hard and put some effort in to pick, it, pick up money. If they don't get money tonight, they'll never get it, Jim. You wouldn't like to work a 40-hour week on this system, though, I'll would you? I'll say it's <laughs> right. Here's the breakaway, and they've heard it. The Suttons have heard it. And there goes Shane, high off the track. And he's gone very fast, and that's where they've picked up the break of 40 or 50 metres. Now, will they go on with it? 
I would say there's every chance in the world that they will, Ray. Will the other the other teams allow them to, do, uh, to go ahead? That's the well, point. Well, they wore them down last time, Ray, and look at the big fellow now, Frohler. He's keeping them in tow as he about to throw Canell into the uh, throng. Craig Price moves up on the outside of him, but by crikey, Gary Sutton certainly putting the power to pedals down the back straight now. 45 or 50 metres in front of uh, the big fellow hands. Canell, Craig Price is there moving up under him, would be Paul Medhurst. I think that uh, Mark Osmond slips up on Kerry Wood rather in the same colours, moves up there. Then we've got Tony Perry going back to Brian Tilly, round the outside of uh, Terry Hammond. He's about to throw Phil Sawyer in as Laurie Venn goes in, and they're picking them up, Ray. They are. I think their effort is short lived. I don't think Canell and Froyle, the big M team, will allow them to get ahead. But this is uh, Shane Sutton. He'll certainly take the sprints out. And there's money in that too, Ray, of oh, course. Oh, my word. Well, Canell's going to be thrown in now by this fellow in. Uh, Right, that's Furler being thrown in by Canell, but they're uh, still about 45 or 50 metres back, and the idea would be to tie these. But while they're doing, I wouldn't be a bit surprised before the end of the night to have a new leader because they're picking up points, Ray. They are. They've been very, very consistent throughout the night in these sprints, and they still have a lead of about 40 or 50 metres over the main bunch of riders headed by Urs Furler, followed then by Murray Hall in third wheel, followed, uh, then Mark Osmond and Craig Price. And isn't it noticeable that when the teams really start to sprint and put the pressure on, that the weaker teams lose ground quickly? Yes, well, the weaker teams do lose a lot of ground. Uh, they must be getting very tired. They're obviously not as fit as uh, some of the uh, sides who do the work. But uh, and well, it's not as talented as either, Ray, but they're putting up Certainly. a good ride because uh, the number of riders on the track is what makes the spectacle. Yes, and they're contesting every issue. They certainly are. Have a look at this fellow. Away goes Kerry Wood. But uh, trying to chase... Uh, Chase the big fellow in Earth's fool, you'd have about as much luck, I reckon, as a mustard plaster would, on, would have on a wooden leg, Ray. That's about <laughs> as much impact as it have because Kerry Wood goes up to him and sits on the back as they come up to get three laps to go. And Shane Sutton realises that the task is fruitless. He goes high on the track and allows the main bunch to regroup once again. That main bunch headed by Hans Cannell. Yes, the big fellow Hans Cannell, Cannonball Cannell, down the back straight about to throw the world champion Urs Fuller and up on the outside goes Paul Midhurst, high up on the bank. Kerry Wood dives down underneath, going with him would be Medhurst. Then we go back to Terry Hammond. They're followed on the outside by Laurie Venn, being taken over now by Tony Perry. Brian Tilly and Lenny Hammond pick those riders up as we see down underneath there's a move. Out of the bunch goes, goes Mark Osmond. He's showing more toe than a Roman sandal down the back straight between picked up. As we see this fellow now going back with him, it's Murray Hall, and he's going to show us something too, Murray. Certainly uh, hope so, because the bell's about to sound for this last lap of this particular sprint, and that's Murray Hall from Gary Sutton in third wheel, Phil Sawyer. Coming around the outside is Wayne Hildred. Wayne Hildred of the Painter's Pot team. He's in about fourth wheel, but down the back straight, Murray Hall is still defying all challenges. That's Gary Sutton about to move up on the outside. Is he going to make a determined challenge? Hall just in front. Sutton is coming up almost on equal terms. He takes the lead just close to home. And that's Gary Sutton taking it out from Murray Hall. Then follows Phil Sawyer. Just about to put in his partner in uh, the little stubby himself in Terry Hammond. And in fourth wheel is uh, Laurie Venn. And let's have a look at that one again. Our replay machine let us down. You can't win them all, Ray. That's the first time. That's the joy of live television. Sutton's have gone again. They're trying very, very hard for this oh, $250. Gee, they, they're, they're, they're consistent riders, Harold. There's some tired riders getting in there too, Ty. I think we've got a new leader, Ray. On sprint points. On sprint points, I think the Suttons have just hit the front. 200 and... Oh, no, I beg your pardon. 272. I thought it was 292 to 289. 272 to 289. 272 to 289. I was uh, the You're scoreboard attendant there. I thought it was 292. Your eyesight's playing up tight. Yes, it is. Uh, I haven't been eating enough carrots, but I've got a few in the garden. I'll bring up a few tomorrow night. Do that. <laughs> See, well. <laughs> but there's $250 still waiting for the team of Gary and Shane Sutton if they can take this lap in this particular sprint. And they've got two laps to go. And the Sutton boys are again way out there in front, headed by elder brother Gary. Yes, Gary Sutton in front as they swing down the back straight about. Uh, 250, 300 metres to go now into the front of the main bunch. The big fella now, Frohler will throw Canel in. They come up, get the bell. Here goes Mark Osman and Kerry Wood. The fella going around the outside reminds me a bit of weakness. Leeson is uh, he's in the all red. The, down the back straight, the Sutton boys are. Uh, there could be a bit of danger here as they swing to the top of the track. And yeah. I didn't think I don't think that Shane Sutton realised they were co so close. And Canel's going to take the sprint out. Oh, it's one lap to go. One lap yes, to go. One lap to go. Canel gets to the front now. He's followed by Kerry Wood. 
Then we go back a little bit further to number 10, which is Ross Forster, but I don't think any of these riders will be good enough to get over Cannell, but I'm wrong as we see a move down the back straight, and here goes Sutton out of the field, moves up on the outside of Cannell, Cannell trying to hold him at bay, but Sutton's going to be too strong. He's too good altogether, this fellow Ray. Up on the outside, Terry Hammond, but he's not good enough to take the biscuits away from Sutton, and Sutton takes out another one. You must, Reaping here's closer, the replay Ray. there. Here's We've got the it this time. But Shane looked over and saw Terry Hammond come at him, but he knew he had plenty in hand, Kicked and he won by a half a wheel. That proves something for uh, Shane Sutton too. Oh yes, well uh, Shane Sutton, he's certainly got a lot of stuff and they're creeping closer. They now go to 275 sprint points, they trail by uh, 16, 15 points. Well we have the five, uh, five laps to go, four laps to go in this particular sprint. Plenty of action here tonight, and that's Phil Sawyer. Phil Crazy Horse Sawyer. He's out there leading the main bunch. There's a tempo slacker somewhat. Underneath is Urs Froiler. He's being towed up by Shane Sutton, in turn by Mark Osborne. And down underneath looks to be Eric Bishop, I think that is. Yes, Eric Bishop is in fourth wheel. Four to go this time round. I can't help having a look at Brian Tilly on the back there, Ray. Every time you have a look at him, if you watch him, he's having a look to see what's going up the front, but he can't see much. It reminds me of some guy trying to look through a keyhole with a glass eye because it's just all black in front of him. But uh, he's sitting up on the back of them trying to look, and uh, he'd be better off up amongst the front and showing a bit more aggression, Ray. I just don't think he's got the ability to stay up there, though. No, maybe that's it, yes. I can't. Uh, he used to be a, a, a dynamic rider uh, in breakaways, but uh, I think the place has found him out. Oh, yes. Well, you can't put your umbrella up. Not much good if it's not raining, Ray, and uh, <laughs> I think that's where he's in a bit of trouble. We're talking about the Lenny Hammond, Brian Tilly team and Sleepmakers. The Sleepmaker team. Here they go across the line. They're now headed by Tony Perry. In second wheel, Shane Sutton. Third wheel, Murray Hall. Followed in by uh, Wayne Hildred. And in fifth placing is Hans Cannell. That's the five leading riders you can see down the back straight. And just on the right hand side of your screen was. No, Laurie Ben. Here they come up now, Ray. They'll get the bell this time. And out in front, we've got Tony Perry about to throw in uh, Eric Bishop. Star Shane Sutton up on the outside with Paul Midhurst. But he slings in Tony Perry as he goes down the back straight the now. Outside. And around the outside, it's the bullet. As Frawler goes to the out front and whoosh, he blows them over with the windows. Frawler rooms up on the outside and goes to the line like a gun barrel. Frawler takes out another sprint, Ray, and can he sprint? Oh, magnificent magnificent sprinter great bike rider this fellow that's why he's the best in the world and that's what you're watching here at the st leonard's velodrome and this is the 1983 winfield channel 9 six-day bike race we'll be back with more of the action in a moment you've waited a long time for a beer like this it's full flavored it's clear and golden with a rich creamy head it's draft brewed to give you that great taste that could only be Bogues. New Bogues Light. Low on alcohol, but that same great satisfying Bogues taste. Ah. New Bogues Light. A new beer from Bogues. Hey, wake up, where have you been? Don't you know there's a better way? Come on in. Cause we'd like to know what you want to do. Where you want to go, we're with you. We're with you all the way, come on in. Because today's the day to wake up and find a better way. We're with you, we're with you all the way. See Island State Credit Union, Launceston and Bernie, the credit union that's with you all the way. At your credit union, we're with you. You own your vehicle, so you have the right to select where you'll have it repaired. Your selection should be made on quality, not price. That's why you're safe when you take your vehicle to a panel master body repair shop. You get the highest standard of workmanship, a confident 12-month guarantee, a job that's done with your safety in mind, free pickup and delivery, and they have a courtesy car available. Take your car to the specialists, the panel master network. There's a repair shop near you. Look for the sign. Panel master. Well, the action's all happening here at the St. Leonard's Velodrome, and gosh, what an hour it's been. Before we go on and uh, have a talk to Ray and Tiger, let's just quickly get an update on the scoreboard. And uh, there it is as it stands at this particular moment. Frawler Canal, no laps down. Team number three, the Big M team, 294 points. Gary and Shane Sutton. Team number 11, the Century Motors team, no laps down, 276 sprint points. So still very, very close. Then Laurie Venn and Craig Price, team number seven. And of course, they're the people from Island State Credit Union. No laps down and 186 sprint points. And I think somewhere out of those three, the winner of the six-day bike race will come. Ray, would you agree with that? I think so. I, I don't think there's any doubt now. The only 
main danger to those three leaders could be the team, the Tas Brewery's team of Phil Sawyer and Terry Hammond. Yeah, exactly, Ray. Why do I like that team? That Phil Sawyer, you go back to last year, oh, crikey, when he got to the front, he stuck to the work yes. to, to yes. those others like uh, like Glue. And uh, I, don't, I can't see that how how they're going to get any any more laps on this these two. Oh, they're only one lap down, oh, you know, and, with, and, and they've got a, a, a big total of sprint points, which is a big advantage. They've got over 200 sprint points, you see, Harold. Anyway, we'll run through the uh, uh, the sponsors once again. Ian McGeo and Tony Perry, team number one, City Twin Cinema. Team number three, Erz Fuerer and Hans Cannell, the Big M team. Phil Sawyer and Terry Hammond, the Tasmanian Breweries team. Kerry Wood and Mark Osmond, you can make it in Tasmania campaign. Eric Bishop and Chris Hunt from the Answered Airlines. Laurie Venn and Craig Price, Ireland State Credit Union. And we've got... Uh, and, they'll, and they'll get two to go this time oh. round for the final sprint. Tiger, you might like to pick up the action and tell it as it is. Right, well, hey, we pick up the action, and out in front we've got Murray Hall in the all-black. Now Phil Sawyer goes out after him. Hans Cannell about to uh, try and pick up Urs Fuller. Urs Fuller still well up on the track, but here's the leaders. They come in and they get the bell, the last sprint of the night. Into the fray goes Matt Urs, but around the outside goes yeah. Terry Hammond. Terry Hammond gets the lead down the back straight. Paul Meadows trying to pick him up an apricot bend. Into the bottom bend is Terry Hammond, but look at Paul Meadows. Paul Meadows running him down with every uh, stride. Will he catch him? No, of course he won't. Terry Hammond takes out the last sprint of the night. Terry Hammond takes it out from Paul Meadows. The next one in was Gary Sutton, Laurie Venn. Then we went back to Urs Fruller. He was followed in by uh, Kerry Wood. But no doubt about that was a great tactical move of Terry Hammonds to take out that final sprint race. And, and, and that Tasmanian Brewery team of Terry Hammond and Phil Sawyer have won the last, have won the final sprint on the last three nights. That's right, three in a row. Phil Sawyer two and Terry Hammond's turn tonight. Tiger, very briefly, your thoughts on tonight's racing. Well, I thought that was the best night's uh, racing that I've seen in probably uh, 20 nights of six days racing. It was the most aggressive. It was four or five sides. And I know that those three teams that are in front of uh, Fresnel and uh, Cannell and Furler uh, Ben and Price and uh, the two Suttons, but there's one team, and we're just talking about them, Hammond and Sawyer, I think could take the apple cart and upset a lot of them, and uh, that's the team that I feel could run into one of the first two places anyway. Tomorrow night? Big night? Oh, magnificent night tomorrow night, and the crowd's been at fever pitch here tonight. It's the most vocal the crowd's been, Ray. And there's the scoreboard, our closing scoreboard. Floyler and Cannell, team number three, 294 sprint points. Sutton and Sutton, team number 11, 277 sprint points. Venn and Price, 186 sprint points. And only one lap down, we find Sawyer and Hammond, 222 sprint points. And Medhurst and Hall, one lap down, 103 sprint points. Don't forget, a special session tomorrow afternoon, 1 o'clock through until 4.30, the racing happens, and tomorrow night live, 7 through 11. We'll We'll be here 10 through 11 for the final hour. Join us then for the Winfield Channel 9 6 days.